Well, as the tourism sector changes on an international footing, we're joined in the line by the editor of the uh, Erin Travel Extra magazine, Owen Corry. Owen, huge changes, and I know we've spoken to you previously during the past, what, 13, 14 weeks now of this pandemic about the uh, the effect of COVID-19 on the travel and tourism industry. We've heard a lot on the programme so far today about people talking um, about a kind of a hopeful rise maybe in the latter stages of the summer now in staycations here in this country. Is that something you expect to see? Yeah, absolutely. In latter stages of the summer is where we would have been talking a week, 10 days ago. What has happened since last Friday and the galvanisation of the the unlocking process has been, I've seen a sort of a surge of... Uh, optimism, uh, if that's not overstating the case, through the home holiday industry. It hasn't been replicated in bookings. There isn't a sort of surge of bookings. Some people are are saying we're getting bookings, but it's coming off such a historically low base. um, It's still not meaningful. But there is a sense that the chances of getting something out of the 2020 season have been revived and move forward, maybe not by a long period, but two weeks is an awful lot in a very short season. Now, in terms of the international advice for people at the moment, I mean, it's still first and foremost, despite the fact we're, we're probably a lot of people are getting it, you know, they're inundated on with these um, emails from airlines offering them deals and telling them about every country that has lifted restrictions. But at the moment, the advice still is there should be no non-essential travel. That's it. It's uh, mixed messaging. The uh, government, the health officials are saying, uh, you know, steady on, guys. Don't get carried away. And the airlines are saying, uh, most notably Ryanair, they started it by saying, we're putting 40% of the fleet in the sky on July the 1st, uh, 1,000 flights a day. The only way they're going to get people on those flights are with uh, the sort of prices we don't see in summer, 34 euro to Barcelona, 60 euro one way to Lanzarote. What people are trying to work out is uh, what happens when you return. Is this 14-day self-isolation period going to mean that your two-week holiday turns into a four-week holiday? And we're in this dichotomy where uh, it's illegal not to fill out the locator form that you're handed on the aircraft, but it's not illegal to break the quarantine. And then to add another dimension of uncertainty, the Department of Foreign Affairs has an advisory against all but essential travel to almost every country in the world, every, you know, every, every country in the world. So that has implications for, tra- implications for travel insurance. From the consumer point of view, the travel insurance that you would take out for a European flight would tend to cover things like uh, cancellation for death with close relative, lost baggage, things like that. The key element, the health element, is covered under your European health uh, card, the the EHIC card. Uh, Obviously, if you're traveling to somewhere like North America, you don't put a toe in there without proper travel insurance, but uh, USA is closed to international visitors at the moment. From June the 15th, there'll be a big unlocking D-Day across Europe. Most of the borders down. There's about two countries. Slovakia would be one of them. Slovenia would be another. Poland have announced they're joining that. But Ireland are keeping the quarantine and the rest of Europe is a little bit grumpy about that. The one thing, Andrea, that's saving us is that grumpy as they are about our quarantine, most of the diversion, most of the attention has been diverted to the British quarantine, and that's where most of the Irish is going at the moment. Mm. I heard the um, the Irish tour operators on earlier this week uh, talking about th- that particular um, line that you mentioned, on calling for clarity about when this fourteen day period will end, because it's not just tourists coming into the country. If I go abroad and then come home, I too have to quarantine for fourteen days. And again, it's not enforceable. So who is quarantined, who is not? Uh, One of some of our most vociferous aviators, and I leave the listeners to guess which is the most vociferous of all, he's been saying that the the whole, uh, it's been ignored widely. It's unenforceable. And what people will do is they'll say, oh, that's not a good idea to go flying. But then when they see a price, they'll jump on it. Not so sure Michael O'Leary is right on that. Uh, People will need a bit more convincing um, on safety issues like that. And they, you know, looking to precedents like 9-11 and the global financial recession where people were coaxed back into the air by low prices. We're not sure it's going to be the same this time around. And the travel experience is going to be a lot more uh, uncomfortable. We will be wearing masks for the duration of a flight. Uh, Dublin Airport said yesterday that um, they would be requiring people to wear masks at the airport. 
and then when you get there, while uh, guests are not allowed, um, are not forced to wear masks, I mean, the compulsory masks are in some countries, but the main tourist destinations, let's cut it down to two, Spain and Portugal, uh, the staff and restaurants would be wearing masks, there would be some sort of social distancing, the pools would be open, there's an elaborate scheme for unlocking and reopening the tourist facilities. But I think, Andrea, we would have to wait for the first batch of travellers to come back uh, from Spain, Portugal, and tell us what it's like. The way Ireland works still is word of mouth is king, uh, way ahead of uh, costly advertising and marketing campaigns. Mm-hmm. And do, do you, what's your um, opinion on that sort of, will there be a hesitation? Will people be confident, do you think, to, to travel abroad towards the, at the end of this year? I think that once we get over that first batch and, uh, you know, what is the new normal, um, I think people will be travelling again. The same applies with home holidays. Um, You know, if you're going to uh, a a west of Ireland town, it's fantastic if everything is open. There is, uh, even on the business side, uh, a lot of uncertainty as to how the two metre, one metre thing will work out for the opening up of restaurants. In the large cities, restaurants uh, will get a throughput of volume over a longer period of time than in a rural town. So what the home holiday industry is also looking for is a clear direction that this is what we're allowed to do. Then they can stack up the costs. Uh, is it, you know, are we able to run at any sort of profit at all? Because it's quite clear um, you won't be able to pay your staff on the, some of the regulations that uh, some of the sm- small restaurants would be facing and then make a decision on opening or not. And that will galvanise the, from the consumer side, but from the supply side, um, we, there's no clarity at the moment. That needs to be sorted out. The, cons- the demand side will follow. The consumer will be in a better position to judge, is it worth going to the west of Ireland? I think there's a big appetite for travel. There's a sort of a patriotic, let's keep our own home holiday industry going as well, but it will be in a better position to judge, is it worth going to the west of Ireland? I think there's a big appetite for travel. There's a sort of a patriotic, let's keep our own home holiday industry going as well, which a lot of people want to participate in. But what the home holiday has to compete with is these airlines are um, able to run at a loss and they will be putting on, as I say, incredible fares. I mean, €30 Euro to Barcelona in July is something I didn't expect to see in my lifetime. OK, Onkari, we'll leave it there for the moment. Uh, Onkari, who's the editor of the Air and Travel uh, Extra, my thanks to you for joining us here on Between the Lines today. If you've missed any Always of the... a pleasure, Andrea. Thank you. If you've missed any of the programme, you can download the podcast on our website at newstalk.com or on the Go Loud app. And as always, you can get in contact with us today by emailing between the lines at newstalk.com or on Twitter at myself at Andrea Gilligan. My thanks as always to the production team, Simon Keane and Stephen Jordan. I'll be back again with Between the Lines this time next week and with the breakfast briefing on Monday from 6. But for me, Andrea Gilligan, have a good day. Between the Lines on News Talk.